and we understand completely that it's tough to make create to cover all those boxes for any family but the advice is create as many choices in each box as you possibly can because the more choices you have the more robust you're going to be How can communities and individuals become more robust in the face of serious risks in South Africa? Well, in this extract from a longer conversation on my podcast, Solutions with David Ansara, I spoke with Dr. Franz Krenier, Director of the Center for Risk Analysis, about what you should do to mitigate the risks in South Africa. If you enjoyed this analysis, please do follow the link in the description below to the full conversation on my podcast. Enjoy. So I'd like to turn the conversation towards your book again. And the last chapter is really what you should do. And talk about starting to develop this idea of a plan B, because it seems that plan A is not working out very well, plan A being the existing uh, democratic dispensation under a unitary state. So what does that plan B actually look like? How do we start as individuals to start to formulate a strategy around how to protect ourselves, our assets, our businesses, our incomes, uh, and our families as well. Yeah, I used to write a column for a port newspaper. It went on for years and years. And was great because you had the freedom under a port's editor to write what you wanted to write. It wasn't the same political constraints that applied to the rest of the mainstream media. And I think about eight years ago, David, nine years ago, we wrote a column that said it's time to make plan B. And we wrote the column to say, imagine a world where, you know, law and order collapses, the currency is going, the state's ability to enforce order is not there. Um, what would happen to you? And we said we think this might be where it's, where it's headed. And uh, you should uh, consider doing the following, and I'll, I'm going to build this out for you now. We said, you know, make sure your kids are in the best possible school because their education is the one thing the state won't be able to expropriate. If, if you're invested entirely in fixed assets in South Africa, be cautious because expropriation is probably coming. If, if all your assets are denominated in the RAND, watch out for what happens if the government one day starts printing money, which is now becoming an increasingly... Uh, uh, plausible result once it's exhausted pension funds. And we, we gave that kind of advice. Enjoying this analysis? Click here to sign up for our 30-day free trial for more content from the CIA. And the column did really well. Um, got read a lot and, and got attacked a lot. And it was the usual crap, you know. Uh, it's pessimistic. And I've always thought in our work, terms like optimism and pessimism don't apply. It's either you get the analysis right and you make a plan to navigate around the icebergs and take advantage of the opportunities, or you get the analysis wrong and when you hit the first iceberg, you sink. And that's all there is to it. People said it couldn't happen and it's crazy and it's too far-fetched. We were talking about the RAND going to 20 to the dollar in the column. We thought that would be a hell of a thing. The RAND got to 20 to the dollar. And... and we, we hit that uh, level uh, fairly recently. We've come back, of course, on the global recovery, but we're going to go back there again and, and way beyond. If I wrote the column today, I'd talk about, you know, and I, I'll get the same reaction. I'll talk about 100 to the dollar. Uh, and then way off on its, on its own. And, and the reaction will be the same as saying 20 uh, those years ago. And... Um, the theme got such a response that we stuck with the theme really forever. And um, when we last year wrote the third of our books on South Africa's future, my publisher at Tafelberg, Marijna Lampre, said, you got to tell people what to do. And, and the advice is not for corporate titans. They can all commission us to come and build country strategies for them. The advice was directed more at, at people, ordinary people, ordinary families, small business owners, you know, what, what should you do? The realistic advice, because all these guys get, David, is 
is this crap my bank sends me about that we should build a social compact. Now, that doesn't get you out of the starting blocks. So the thinking has evolved over the years. In the book, we said, make it simple. Divide your life into four boxes and think of yourself in four boxes. The first box is, is, is what money you have, if you have any. And some people, most people have a little bit of money. What, what, what are you doing with that? And what are the risks? The second box we said we want you to think about is what you do, your, your career and your business. Uh, where do you do it? How do you do it? And uh, can you do something else? And, you know, we, the risk we sort of flagged, we'll go into the detail now, is, you know, if, if you worked only, if you had a business that contracted only to the state, we'd say that you've got a problem. The, if, if your business is entirely invested in fixed assets, yeah, we'd say you, you, you're running a risk. Third thing we asked you to think about is, is where in the world can you be? Are you stuck to one place or can you move? And that might mean moving uh, from, from Gauteng as Johannesburg crumbles into the Cape that might hold up better. It could be moving to another part of the world. Do you have those choices? And the fourth box we asked you to think about is your children, because your, your children matter to you and that they have a future is often very much more important than whether you have a future as, as a person. And are you preparing your children to be globally competitive in the event that South Africa is not, it mustn't be their only option. And we understand completely that it's tough to make, create, to cover all those boxes for any family. But the advice is create as many choices in each box as you possibly can. Because the more choices you have, the more robust you're going to be. If you have no choices in any of those boxes, you're stuck in the north of Johannesburg. You contract to a government department or agency. You can never leave or go anywhere else. All the money pension you have is in is here and in in the state in in in, in, the, in the rand in, in in the country, and your your kids' only option is to follow in your footsteps. That individual is running a very high degree of risk. That if South Africa goes wrong, their life experience is going to be very harsh. If you become something else. Let's say you, you, you are able to save a bit of money and, and, and go for some diversification. We don't give financial advice or investment advice, none, ever. We give strategic insights. Go talk to your advisor and they'll, they'll, they'll give you some ideas. You know, make sure your kids are as well educated as they could ever be so that that's a good investment for your South African rands so that they do have the option to be competitive in the rest of the world. If they get the chance to travel after school, give them the opportunity. If they can go and work overseas, gain some experience, they can come back. Your business, try not to be dependent on large corporates and government work or overly dependent on fixed infrastructure in the country. The ideal is a small, is a business that can work for clients here and around the world and and a, a broad spread so that if a large corporation you know comes to you and says well your be figures not up to standard we're booting you but that's that's not the end of you or the government says we've run out of money now or says you must pay a large bribe uh, and and you don't you you shouldn't do that then then you're then you're free and and that where in the world can you be do you have to be in one location can you start making a, a plan to change location and get yourself into a community that understands that as the state retreats, you in that community better be prepared and willing to take on what were its functions if you are to become a robust community. So that's what the advice later became. And I, we, we still now and again mention it in public here and there. You don't get the criticism we used to get for being crazy or way out or so on. And I think anyone who ended up queuing in Durban for eight hours to get into a supermarket to buy a loaf of bread would have been able to spend that eight hours productively pondering the merits of our 
2000 and whatever, 13 or whatever it was, advice. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this conversation, you might want to check out the full discussion with Franz Grenier that's linked over here and in the description below. I'd also be really grateful if you could subscribe to my other channel that's linked over here. My name is David Ansara. This is the Center for Risk Analysis. Until next time, take care.